Miyawaki Sakura began her music career in HKT48 back in 2011 and would be a concurrent member of sister group AKB48 from 2014 to 2018. Over time, she slowly made her way up through the ranks and eventually in 2015, she would rank 7th overall in the general election with over 81,000 votes and got her first solo lead position on AKB's 43rd single, Kimiwa Melody. If you're not familiar with AKB's system and J-pop in general and how that kind of works, there are some other creators that have made some great videos going into that that I would recommend watching because I'm not going to have time to cover it here. Now, during this time, she also became some of a meme recently after the Seraphim's debut with her performance of Kiss Me by AKB48 back in 2016, which is something her now members actively tease her about, which is pretty cute. Her popularity in J-pop grew to the point where she decided to become a trainee on the Produce 48 show, which is a production idol group show that attempted to find really what was the next IOI at the time. Due to her great visuals and strong charisma throughout the show, she's able to finish in a very close second place to the eventual now widely regarded K-pop icon, Won Young. On October 29, 2018, Eyes One would debut with Lavian Rose, and the K-pop community simultaneously flipped on its head. Lavian Rose is now heralded by most of the K-pop community as being one of the best girl group debuts of our recent time. People ended up loving the new and refreshing sound that Eyes One brought to the table. During an era where girl crush and more mature concepts were starting to pick up more traction, Eyes One chose to go the more elegant, uh, more fairy-like approach compared to the other contemporary groups. It is important to look at how Sakura contributed to the group because it was a large group. She was a sub-vocalist and a very strong visual and already has some singing experience. You know, she's been a part of J-pop for seven years prior to this point. And unfortunately, I have some disappointing news. In La Vian Rose, Sakura got maybe five or six seconds of center time and about nine to 10 seconds of total screen time. She got about 13.2 seconds of singing time, but most of this was just ad lib sections and layering on the chorus and wasn't a ton of like her own individual sections. Unfortunately, this ended up becoming a very common theme through a lot of Eyes One's releases. She was used as a side visual, a very minimal sub vocalist that would come on for an ad lib section or maybe one quick verse and that was it. In Violetta, she got 13.1 seconds of singing, leading off the song and finishing with some ad libs. In Fiesta, she got 15.8, which is a little higher, but in Secret Story of the Swan, she only got 10.4. And in Panorama, she got an embarrassingly low 8 seconds of singing time. In fact, her longest verse of that entire song is like three words at the end of the song. And again, these second times are being incredibly generous. Most of this is just ad lib sections and short verse duty, something that you see nowadays with like a Bahie from Kepler. This to me seems to undermine any sort of talent that she possessed. Like now looking back at a lot of their music videos from hindsight, it's kind of embarrassing how poorly they utilized her as a member of the group. And again, a reminder, she's been a J-pop idol in HKT and AKB for over five years up until this point. She was talented in Eyes One. She had relatively good stage presence for their concept. She was a good dancer and got better as they went along their contract. And I think she fit the concept of Eyes One very well. But that doesn't mean that she wasn't criminally underutilized. From one perspective, I kind of get it. They had a lot of talent in Eyes One. Kwon Eunbi, Yena, Jo Yuri. But is that reasoning, or is that really just an excuse? Eyes One essentially flaunted Sakura around like a showpiece and had her sing five lines because the contract obligation probably said she had to sing. This was actually a common dialogue brought up at the time amongst the K-pop community, to the point where some were suspecting that she only got in because she was Japanese and they needed more representation in the group. Purdue shows are known to be very adamantly biased for Korean idols, and even in groups like Kepler and Eyes One, in which more talent is supposed to be given off because Eyes One had more Japanese trainees come in, a lot of people brought up the point that maybe Sakura was only voted in to help spice up the lineup a little bit. Now, unfortunately for these rumors, they were only amped up after it was revealed that Eyes One's lineup had been forged. 
certain idols had been manipulated into the group by the showrunners without the voters' knowledge. This was probably one of the biggest controversies of recent time in the K-pop community. Who was actually supposed to be in the group? Which members were the ones that were tampered with? Now, Sakura was someone who was brought up quite adamantly, and a lot of K-Nets argued that because she lacked dance talent and vocal ability, that her high placement seemed to be a bit fishy. Eyes One was able to recuperate after that scandal and have another comeback, but they would eventually disband on April 29th, 2021. After the disbandment, on May 15, 2021, Sakura would leave HKT48 officially and even had a graduation concert on the 19th, which must have been emotionally taxing for her to disband from a produced group that was loved so much by the community and then to leave a group that you've been a part of for literally over triple the time. But now I think would be a good place to stop and talk about Sakura as an idol and her progression and development to this point in her career. It was clear that she was underdeveloped going into Eyes One as a trainee, she lacked a lot of what you would want. And because of this, I think that's why she was subsequently underutilized compared to some of the other members in Eyes One. Unfortunately, I think this was a detriment to her after the disbandment because I think less groups were willing to take a shot at bringing her into a new potential lineup. At this point in her career, she wasn't yet a standout vocalist, and she'd become an above average dancer from training in Eyes One. But the issue was is that Eyes One promoted Sakura as being somewhat of a center, and I think a lot of agencies and labels may not have agreed. I think some of these are valid criticisms, the fact that she just really isn't that amazing of a vocalist and that she can be a bit stiff as a dancer are things that people can legitimately say about her at this point in her career. Some were definitely more harsh than others to the point of cyberbullying and attacks, which I do not agree with. At this point, after the disbandment of Eyes One and departure of HKT48, little was really heard about Sakura outside of getting some brand deals and tie-ins. She acted in a few shows, she was a radio show host, and she even has her own gaming channel, which she uploaded actively during the hiatus and is up today. It's subsequently been abandoned now for a little over a year because of recent events. But I still think that's pretty interesting that an idol has their own YouTube channel that does that kind of stuff, so I would check it out if you feel like it. However, all of this would change on March 14, 2022, as it would be announced that Sakura had signed an exclusive contract with Source Music, which is a subsidiary of HYBE, and was confirmed to debut in the new upcoming girl group, The Seraphim. In the documentary series, The World Is My Oyster, created to show the foundation and formation of HYBE's new girl group, La Seraphim, Sakura would express her feelings in response to multiple critics' takes on her vocal ability, saying, quote, Many people said I'm a bad singer. When I heard that, I was really hurt. So it was really hard to even enter the recording booth. This led to the doubt of her even wanting to have lines in the first place, continuing on by saying, quote, That's also when I started thinking, I don't want many lines in the song. I wanted to do well, but I was also worried people might say those things again. Picture this, an idol so discouraged with her voice that she didn't even want to get lines in a song, in a brand new group. This opportunity was great for her. She had the ability to get more lines with less members in this group and show off her real talent after years of playing second fiddle, essentially, in Eyes One with constant criticism. Yet the hate dug in so far that she doubted her own ability to sing. And again, reminder, she's been an idol both in J-pop and K-pop up until this point, being a singer for almost a decade. Look, at this point in her career, I get it. Sakura is not an amazing vocalist, but I don't hate her voice. I know she can sing circles around me and most other people giving her criticism. It's honestly pretty heartbreaking to watch, right? As a viewer, you would think an idol would want more lines, not less of them. Sakura would go on and say that she wouldn't let that get to her and that she didn't want to run away from that criticism. However, what that exchange does show me is that the criticism that you post online that you may not think actually does anything to these idols actually does mentally. Later in the documentary, she would go on to say that she felt alone and that she didn't know if people would even like her anymore after her departure from Eyes One. 
She wrote that she wanted someone, anyone to like her and that she didn't want to regret the path that she had taken. That is honestly so sad to hear from someone who was in a group as big as Eyes One who was loved as a member of AKB and HKT. It again just makes you realize how lonely some of these idols can be. Like idols are people too, right? Backlash and criticism affects them the same way it does to you and it does to me. With Sakura's addition in La Seraphim, many were wondering what role she would take in comparison to her last position in Eyes One. La Seraphim is chock full of talent. You have an ex-main vocalist of Eyes One who is already immensely talented, a tenured trainee who also just casually sung opera on the side so you know she's going to be a good vocalist to some degree, a young gun with incredible dancing ability at a very young age, and a prestigious, incredibly talented ex-ballet dancer with stunning visuals. The real question was, how is Soares going to use her? How are they going to fit her into the puzzle that is being in a K-pop group? It's obvious that the directive team wanted Sakura to be known in the group. She leads off the first chorus, something that she very rarely ever did in Eyes One. She leads off part of the pre-chorus and even ends the song as she let off. Sakura is clearly meant to be the center of this group. They are using her as she should have been utilized in Eyes One. She still only got around 14 seconds of line distribution, which was eerily similar to Eyes One and people kind of talked about that. But it was still pretty clear that Source wanted to show her off as a visual presence and her latent dancing ability, which had improved dramatically. Sakura was really never an amazing dancer going into the Purdue show. Again, most choreos, if any, for AKB and HKT are very simple at best. Throughout the production series, she was always badgered because of her lack of dance talent. But in Eyes One, she was able to gradually improve, especially through the Panorama era. But in Fearless, she is arguably five times the dancer she was in Eyes One. I think that's because Eyes One's choreos were much unified. They didn't really focus on standout individual dance performances. I don't think that Eyes One was able to tap into the dance potential that Sakura had because of their choreo style. And I think just how Chewan described in The World Is My Oyster, you know, being under high with this new group that is more about individuality has helped Sakura a lot with her dancing. By the end of the album, she had a little over a minute of line distribution, which surprisingly didn't land her in last out of all the members, which seemed to be mostly the case amongst a lot of Eyes One albums in which she was normally bottom three. Overall, the Fearless era was able to show off a significantly improved Sakura in both dancing and even vocal ability. I think the anti-fragile era is the era in which Sakura really starts to grow into her own both on stage and vocally in the group. I think the reggaeton title track and the way in which she had to sing the pre-chorus really fit her vocal tonality. Overall, group-wise, I think this era was important because it clearly showed the visible growth of chemistry with each other on stage. Like, Fearless, they were a pretty good group on stage. They weren't amazing yet, but Anti-Fragile, they like really turned into some of the best 4th gen performers out there. After the unfortunate departure of Garam, there would be somewhat of a vocal hole in the group left behind, and it seemed like both Unche and Sakura had taken up most of that. Sakura was featured in parts of the pre-chorus this time around, and she even leads off the second chorus. Of course, in a group with literally half the members of Eyes One, she was going to get more screen time by default, but I think it's the way in which she acts with the camera that shows you the level of growth 
that she's gone through. It's almost as if she looks more confident in her own visuals and her dancing ability. Her facial expressions this comeback vastly improved and I think her stage presence took a big step up. I don't want to try to offend Eyes One fans in any way here, but honestly Eyes One Sakura was a little boring to watch. I think there was a few members in that group that were a little boring to watch because their choreos were so synchronous that everyone kind of just felt like a cog in the machine and they were members like Sakura who didn't really stand out stage presence wise. But now she was like creating her own signature moves, like that tongue in the cheek thing that she always does during Chewan's verse. It was so refreshing to see her look more confident on stage compared to the very timid way she used to perform back with Eyes One. And by all means, I understand that is probably part of the concept as well, right? Like Lacerfin's concept is confident, Eyes One's concept is elegant, but there is definitely a shift that you can tell happened with her between the groups. Interestingly enough, she didn't actually get all that much more line distribution. Um, she only had 15 seconds this time around, but I think her lines were arguably more apparent and impactful while getting a lot more screen time during her lines. Anti-Fragile Sakura is where we sit now with her, and I think she has vastly improved as a performer since the beginning of Eyes One till now. I said in my previous video for Chewan that her growth was more out of necessity and concept. Chewan wasn't improving under Woolam and she felt like she needed a change and thus made the choice to switch her brand to more of a fierce version of her Eyes One self. Look, was Chewan good at stage presence during her Eyes One eras, especially during Fiesta and Panorama and stuff, yes. But I still think she went through a dramatic change in between the groups. I see a lot of people say, well, you know, Che Wan was kind of like this in and, and the end of Eyes One already. Yeah, she had stage presence, but that's not what made her what she is now. Sakura's journey is filled with a lot more self-growth, a lot more gradual development and self-healing. An experienced idol being doubted and dragged for her lack of talent in Eyes One and being completely underutilized, then leaving her roots behind in favor of taking a risk of re-debuting, dealing with others' expectations and hatred, and then putting in the work and effort to become a better singer and performer. Sakura's change in Le Seraphim may not be directly as apparent as Chewan's from first glance, but instead it shows the mental and physical journey an idol has to go through and endure when facing criticism from the public and even from themselves. Sakura still has a ways to go, in my opinion, in order to reach her full potential. She's still nowhere near a perfect performer in any metric. But the fact that she's already grown so much in such a little time with a new group, it seems to really be enjoying her time with the other members. The fact that she's still an idol doing this after all the shit she's been through with the criticism and the backlash online, being questioned and whether she even deserved to be an eyes one in the first place, having to leave something which you were a part of for almost an entire decade. Sakura needs to be showered with more love and attention and credit because I think she deserves it. Oh, 